is meant. We felt like I didn't hear testing. Okay. All right. So let's call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the June 19th meeting of the Dunn County Planning and Resource and Development Committee. All members of the committee are here. So we have a quorum. Um, okay. Approval of the minutes from January 13th. Anyone have a motion? Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Second. Second. I will second it, Mr. Chairman. Now, are there any uh, corrections or additions? Okay, <laughs> then uh, approval of the minutes. All in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries, minutes are approved. 
Uh, we have any public comments? Anyone here today? Um, Jean, you want to say, save your comments for tonight? Okay. Um, um, public hearing? None. So, kind of a light agenda. Uh, staff reports. Morning, everyone. Uh, he Heather is not here today. She's sure. out of town on a conference, but I have her report up okay. on the screen. She mentioned if she if there were any questions by the committee, she could certainly answer those at a later date. So, Mr. Chairman, I thought at one time I read in there where her department helped out uh, like another department. Is that pretty common? I thought she wrote in there that into the uh, not the Treasury Department, but the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, but, yeah. So that does she normally do that to help when they're short? Uh, well, I think what she's getting at is in the interim, when the Treasurer's position was open, oh, she sure. was approving time and, and doing okay. other things on a as-needed basis, but that has since ended now with the formal hiring of a Treasurer. Is her department in compensated or they just kind of go back and forth? And I can't answer that. I I mean, okay. I can't answer that. I would just assume it's just done as a courtesy. Okay. A very temporary well, basis. It's kind of nice, really. Mm -hmm. Helps out. So thank you. And Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, I wish she was here, but uh, for the record, a, a comment. I had some, uh, in, some business in Eau Claire County. But I called down here at Register of Deeds, and they just kind of guided me through what I needed to do over there. They were very helpful. So that's all. Okay. Uh, well, let's move on then. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so my commit or my report is up on the screen for the committee to look at. I don't have anything additional to add unless there's specific questions. Um, has been very busy. Certified survey map review is definitely up. Um, so if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions for Mr. Carlson? Okay. Thanks a lot, Tom. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I just want to say a couple things. Um, so we are are um, we are hiring again to replace um, Sue, who moved to the county clerk's office. Um, so that position is up on the website. Um, I think it's on Indeed and a few other places. So we're hiring a new program assistant. If anyone would like to get the word out on that, um, it's a full time position. Um, and then I just wanted to say, hopefully, um, <clears throat> we find someone, I think we're going to have that within 14 days. It'll be up. And I guess I'm here to answer any questions about my report. Any questions? Mr. Chair? Yeah. In, in referring to the comprehensive plan and West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning. I was going through that and I was curious that they're going to provide us in the end with a, a PDF copy of the thing. And I'm just curious why they would give us just a PDF copy and not one that we can edit easily and so forth. Um, so just, just to put it out there, all of that is just a scope of work. It's mm -hmm. all negotiable right now. We haven't said or signed any contracts or agreed that that would be the final product. So I think that's a good point that maybe we should make sure that we're actually getting something we can edit, like a Word document or something like that. Um, I am able to edit PDFs. I have the Adobe software to do that. So if we really needed to, I think I could get in there. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of their scope. I still need to meet with Susan again and narrow that down a little bit. I think there's quite a few things in there that we can probably take off their plate and do in-house, but that's essentially what they could offer for what I said we kind of were looking for. Uh, it's it's a first step, really, just kind of see what it is. I, I liked it. 
it did kind of explain things and and then didn't make it seem any smaller job, <laughs> but uh, that was good. I liked it. Sir Chairman. Yeah. I just want to say, Anne, that I really appreciate you sharing that I had had a conversation earlier with Susan and wasn't quite sure where, where we were going. So having that um, in front of us, I think, is really very helpful. And I think this is going to be a good process. Thank you. Um, and also, I will be bringing this back to the PRND. I just wanted to get it out there because we yeah. just got it. So we'll be talking about it more. I agree. It's great to see it ahead of time and have a chance to look at it. Monica? Um, I had just one small question about that. So it refers to something called the plan committee. Is that PRND? Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, I think I think that would be the filler. <laughs> May I ask another question? Sure. Of course. Um, on the board of adjustment um, outline, the Peter Gritzmacher Jakes um, didn't didn't we approve that? Um, the PR and D approved a rezone for the same property recently. Oh, so so the variance is on top of the rezone. Yep, totally. Yep. So okay, their whole project right. required. So there was it's kind of a multi-step project. They wanted to expand just a small area of right. Jakes. But when we looked at it, Jake's is on like four different parcels and they needed to align so those parcels could be combined. So that's where the rezone came right. in. So they went to Shoreland Recreation. Now, because they're looking to go closer to the river, they needed a variance to be able to go closer. Okay. I guess we didn't look at the closer to the river part. No, because this would be Got something it. that PR&D wouldn't be... Got it. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And that kind of reminds me of, I'm not sure if we, I can't remember whether you reported to us on this or we, since we canceled our meeting, whether we didn't get a report, but uh, the previous um, Board of Adjustment meeting, there were some decisions made. Did you, have you reported to those, uh, us on them, the one regarding the, the uh, garage variance, for example, or so, what's the status of that? I guess with every month, I've been trying to say, here's what's coming and here's what was done the last mm -hmm. time. So I, I think it was in there. I think we very briefly talked about that a variance was denied at the last bill. Yeah. Yep. And I can give you an update on that. They are um, going through the circuit court to um, have that reviewed, okay. that decision reviewed. So that's in progress too, right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Ivan? All right. Thanks. Sam. Chase. Morning, everyone. Um, I guess if you have any questions about what uh, I have included in my report, there's a lot there, a lot of a few new things. Uh, one thing to highlight that we're still trying to figure out what to do with um, Heather Wood in our office, along with um, former public health department employee Caitlin Ingle applied for a competitive award competition, so to speak, regarding um, the work that we worked on for the private well monitoring program last year. And we just got an email last week or two weeks ago saying, congratulations, here's $35,000. Wow. <laughs> so um, <laughs> and if you recall, when we report reported several times on the, the program from last year, near the end of that report, it was always, well, we can continue this if we have additional funding. So <clears throat> right now we're we're going to work with public health and try to figure out um, what the next steps are. Um, there really isn't a an end date on this type of funding. There's no reporting required. Um, so likely what we're going to look at is how far can we stretch this into the future um, to have some reoccurring um, private well monitoring in the community um, to try to enhance our ability for trend you know, more scientific trend analysis instead of just random sampling. Um, so you may see some budget carry forward requests in the future for this particular um, pot of money just to, to stretch it as far as we can. So um, with that, there's a few other things in here. I appreciate again your willingness to meet in a special meeting regarding the, the bike trail um, and we'll hopefully be able to talk. Well, we will be talking about that tonight as well. So. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Oh, thanks. And yes, on this this 
booklet. You know, this is something that our state association, Wisconsin Land and Water, puts out, um, especially on after um, an election season where there's potential turnover on land conservation committees. So um, I think it's a nice refresher on the authorities and kind of what um, responsibilities you as a land conservation committee have um, when it comes to those types of subjects and topics. So um, I guess if you have any questions on that, I can be happy to answer as well. So, so would um, the uh, every annually the Land Conservation Association has a conference, right? And I at attended. Um, uh, I don't know; it's must been five years ago one time, but was extremely impressed by the workshops then. And when I looked at the conference schedule this year, it looked even better. Like it really is becoming a really important conference, and the, the committee. Maybe when the when the when the, they release some information, we could share it in the committee and see if there's any interest in anyone on the on the board attending. Yeah, that conference is typically the first week in March, um, and yeah, I would encourage your participation in in this association. It they've done wonders here in the last um, probably ten years. Uh, especially when it comes to funding at the state level for supporting conservation yeah. across the state. So, yeah, I'd be happy to to hook you up. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Thanks, Jason. The uh, ENS annual report. Okay, yeah. So in in your packet is um, our written annual report. Um, hopefully you had a chance to go through that, um, try to just provide some of the high level stuff of what we worked on um, over the past year. Um, for tonight's meeting for county board, as we present that, um, as with the direction we've been given and maybe what you've seen in other reports, is just to try to focus on portions of the work that we do. Um, it's really hard to do that when we got so many irons in the fire, but um, we'll try to uh, make that happen tonight to just to give a snippet of what uh, what, we're, what we're actually working on. Um, our PowerPoint presentation, we're still still um, doing some edits to that, so we have something for you for tonight. Um, but in general, this is what um, it's very similar to what it be last year. I'll start out the intro tonight, uh, giving a just some talking points on our structure within our environmental services department and explaining especially for new county board members um, that we are a shared management um, of, a, of a department. We each have um, responsibilities in our own divisions. Um, and then, um, you know, basically, you know, explaining that we're we're a team based approach and that we're we make decisions collectively um, as we move forward. Our budgets are separate yet combined as we move those through that process. Um, we do have a I guess what we call a rotating facilitator, someone that's a point of contact um, between all three of us. Um, that was something that was probably maybe more so um, with previous previous county manager trying to have a point of contact for someone for for him to to contact. Um, we really kind of share in that responsibility, but at this point in time, I kind of set up an agenda for our our monthly meetings as a team um, and kind of take that that lead with. Her. I do think that there is some confusion at times um, within potentially supervisors as well as um, other staff in the county as to me being the department head and I'm not the department head. Um, that is a shared responsibility. So I just want to make sure that that's clear because I think that's confusing sometimes. But um, yeah, if you want to go to the next slide, Tom. So then from there, we'll just jump into, um, you know, here's the committee that oversees us. I might give a, a brief explanation of the Land Conservation Committee. It's been a little bit challenging, you know, in the last year or so with trying to decipher when to put a Land Conservation Committee on the agenda for certain topics. Um, the individual um, that represents um, the FSA spot on the Land Conservation Committee has, hasn't been very active. And that's partly due to the direction that the Farm Service Agency has given um, their representatives, um, basically saying, uh, we don't want you on land conservation committees. Um, be, out of fear of it being construed that they are representing the FSA, 
and not just a farmer representative on the land conservation committees. Mm -hmm. So um, with the turn of the year, legislation changed to um, basically allow for an ad hoc or an at-large person, particularly a, a farmer representative on the land conservation committee, of which we'll probably should follow up with at some yeah. point. But um, so, yeah, if you want to run to the next slide, Tom, or two slides, maybe. So now I'll just jump in tonight for, for our portion, you know, talking about our staff here in the Land Conservation Division. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide, Tom. We'll have just a smattering of the programs that we have our fingers in. Um, clearly, there's more than that at times, and every given year could be different uh, depending on what opportunities present themselves. But um, next slide. And then I think it would be fair to say that some of our biggest work in 2023 was the private well monitoring program. I know many of you on the county board have heard this report already, but there are certainly some members that have mm -hmm. not. And from a, you know, a, an annual report perspective that's kind of memorialized, um, I think having this included is part of that. So that's what I'll be spending my time on. I'll breeze through some of this today, but, um, you know, just looking at the number of samples and if you want to go to the next slide, Tom, touch on the, the money side of things. Next slide. Um, threw in some of the maps. Um, I can touch on PFAS, arsenic, some of the results. Next slide. Um, nitrate being the uh, topic of interest, typically when we talk about groundwater quality. Um, I'll, I'll mention the statistics too, as far as what the county average is um, and the number of samples that exceed the safe drinking water standard. Um, and to give a little caveat for some of the modeling, uh, for the, especially for the map on the right um, and how we develop that. So, and then the next slide, um, talk about continuing that groundwater monitoring program. Um, looking at this year, 2024, um, as you may have read in my monthly report, we are on track to have 240 samples like our goal was with the remaining ARPA funding. And then we've had um, DACCAP come in and looking to do some sampling in our area, particularly related to pesticides, but they will include nitrates um, and some metals um, screen in there. So then we were able to dip into our wait list, um, reprioritize where, um, which agency was going to do the collection, um, and we'll hopefully be able to get close to 300 samples this year. Um, the, then the last thing I, I was planning to mention, that $35,000 award, um, and hopefully be able to continue that in the future. Um, so with that, um, you know, that would be my portion. That's, that's Heather taking a sample from my kitchen. <laughs> she goes, it's a good thing I washed the dishes that day. <laughs> that's why we're reviewing this now for your approval. <laughs> so yeah, then we'll jump in and then Tom can take over now, I think is his next slides. And can I ask uh, Chase a question? Yeah. Your your new uh, like water sampling. Are you going to concentrate on, on new samples, or are you going to try to build a history to see what direction the the uh, like the water is going up or down in nitrates and phosphates and that kind of stuff? I would say it's a little bit of both for this this particular year in 2024 with the remaining ARPA funds. We opened it up to citizens that were interested. There were you know several that may not have been on the list last year or missed it um, and wanted to get their water tested. So we're including some new folks, but also many people are reoccurring samples. And I think the ultimate goal would be, especially as we think about this new funding source, is to get into some sort of a routine where we're going back to the same well um, you know, over a period of time. Um, we didn't want to um, prohibit or um, exclude anyone on this particular set. But I think having DACCAP come in with their interest and follow up with their, and this isn't just interest just in Dunn County, they do this on an annual basis around the state. It just so happens that they're coming here um, and we're taking advantage of, uh, so Heather's worked with that individual at DACCAP to um, select some wells in the interest areas of the county that DACCAP was, uh, particularly the Southeast part of the county. And then we're able to take move those people into that funding pool, and then we'll try to pick up the rest. And that's thirty five thousand dollar grant. Is that like you yearly something you apply for every year, or is it just occasionally? Yeah, this was I think a, this is a one time deal. Oh, one -time um, deal. It was just a you know as we 
scour for funding sources. Seems like we do that in perpetuity, but um, <laughs> come across, came actually Caitlin with Public Health came across this one and collaborated with Heather in our in our department, and um, clearly they knocked it out. So, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, how much collaboration in this round with the uh, Public Health water testing? Um, capacity. Yeah, I would say it's it's relatively the same. Um, okay. We're not clearly don't we're not putting out um, a lot of publicity on it just because we've got enough people that are interested. We're not advertising and soliciting new, so that's where public health really came into to play, especially with the heat group. Yeah. Last time, uh, but we're we're on a, a very common uh, talking basis with public health on this, um, especially with thinking about the future of having a, a lab on site on, here yeah, in and how we can maybe try to facilitate um, or support that and run samples through our, our own lab instead of you know outsourcing them. So great. Thank you, Chase. Tom. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. So this will be my portion of the tonight's annual report. I'm going to introduce myself. Um, I'm the smallest division within ENS. I just have two employees, Greg and Troy, uh, that do most of the field or all of the field work, I should say. Um, I'm going to kind of go through. I know we're supposed to focus on one program or service that we provide, but I thought it'd be nice to at least put everything up there. Just a basic overview of everything we do. Um, so those are all the things that we have our hands in. Um, and then I'm gonna focus on review and approval of regulated land divisions. Um, I wanna start out by explaining what gives the county the authority to adopt a land division ordinance. It's under state statute 236.45. There's a whole bunch of purpose statements, which I'm not gonna read, but I'll have those up on the screen. Um, <clears throat> so then delegation of power, any municipality, town or county that has established a planning agency, which is this committee, may enact ordinances governing the subdivision or other division of land. So. There's a lot of things we can do, but there's some things we can't do. We can't be more restrictive with respect to time limits, deadlines, notice requirements, or other provisions um, of state statute that provide protections for a subdivider. Um, just explain a little bit about the history of the county land division ordinance. Um, the ordinance was in effect, it was March of 2006, and it hadn't been amended for many, many years. No amendments. We did a complete repe <clears throat> repeal and rewrite in 2021. And then as this committee is aware, um, we went through some amendments which were adopted in July of 2023, which is what we're using today. Um, the ordinance applies to all the unincorporated areas of the county. A lot of people don't realize that. So the city of Menominee or any of our seven incorporated villages are not um, subject to the ordinance requirements. And, in, and just kind of give a high, there's a lot of things in the ordinance and I, I certainly don't have, you know, we're given 10 minutes collectively, so I have to make this short. So I'm just trying to hit the high points, but basically any newly created parcels less than 20 acres need to comply with the ordinance. Um, maximum of four lots smaller than 20 acres may be created from each quarter quarter within a five-year period. And if you want to do more lots, you have to go through the platting process, state or county plat. Um, so the types of land divisions that we review are CSMs and plats. I want to briefly touch on condominiums. Um, they're technically a form of ownership. They're not a land division. So a lot of people don't realize that. We see very few condominiums, but we do review them. Um, and then just explain that CSMs and plat, condo plats are reviewed and approved by county staff. County and state subdivision plats um, are initially reviewed by county staff, but in the end they're approved by either the PRD committee. Um, well, they're approved by the PRD committee regardless. And then if it's a state subdivision plat, those types of plats also require review and approval by the state. Um, talk about who else is involved in the review process. Periodically, we get the Register of Deeds involved, Land Information Office, our Highway Department, and then sometimes the DOT, if the land division is on a state or U.S. highway, they get involved, the DNR, um, and Department of Administration Plat Review down in Madison. Um, what we look for, um, certainly compliance with all county ordinances. So we, we have more than just the county land division ordinance. We have chapter 13 of the zoning ordinance, the shoreland ordinance. Um, so we, we look for compliance with all applicable county ordinances, state statute, and then chapter 87 of Wisconsin Administrative Code. 
Several towns in the county also have adopted their own standalone land division ordinance and they purview, or perform reviews and approvals as well. Um, I wanna make a point that the county doesn't review for those standards. Probably the biggest one would be green space in a lot of our towns or minimum lot size. Um, we don't review for that. Although having said that, if I notice a, a map is missing green space in a town that requires it, I'll bring it to the surveyor's attention just as a as a courtesy. Um, most of the local surveyors are very good at knowing, you know, what what ordinance requirements are necessary. But where I find we get firms that come in from out of town, other parts of the state or out of state, have surveyors that are licensed here, and they're very unfamiliar with the local local rules. So I try and help them out where I can. Um, obviously, we don't want a map recorded that's going to violate a, a town ordinance, but at the same time, I'm not being paid to review against the town's ordinance. So it's trying to find that that middle ground. Um, um, and just give some, you know, show an example of our checklist. The checklist is actually five sheets long, so I just put the first two sheets on here. But every map goes through a checklist. That's That way we're ensuring that we're being fair to everybody that's submitting maps and making sure we don't we don't miss something. So every map goes through a checklist. We perf um, we charge a fee for our review. So I'm going to bring up the fee schedule, um, and then just show some examples of some of the documents. Here's a, a subdivision plat. This happens to be a state subdivision plat. The last one we had, um, Idella Ridge, which you remember, town of Menominee. Bring up a condominium plat and just kind of highlight, you know, that there's units. Um, the three big things with a condo plat are you have units, common elements, and then limited common elements. Um, and just show some examples of our most common form of land divisions, which are certified survey maps. Here's a very simple certified survey map. We can have a very complicated certified survey map with a lot of information on. Um, and then just showing what, you know, CSMs can be used to create a new parcel. They can also be used to combine parcels. So on the left, we have a map that's combining three platted lots into one. Typically it's for setbacks. Somebody wants to build a home straddling a lot line. They can't meet the required zoning setbacks, so they're required to combine lots. So on the left, you see a, a lot combine and a recorded subdivision plat. On the right, you see two certified survey map lots that somebody simply wants to combine. That one happens to be in the village of Ridgeland. <clears throat> and then just some statistics trends over the last five years, number of parcels created by CSMs and plats. You can see it kind of varies with uh, 2019 and 2021 being very strong years, although 2023 is, is not bad either. When you go back, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, these numbers are, are quite high. Um, and then just shows statistics by township for the last year, um, number of parcels created and the acreage that was involved. And I thought I'll break out the, the three top of each one so you can see on there for total number of parcels created uh, red cedar don and spring brook and then if we look at acreage red cedar new haven and otter creek um, and that'll conclude my report so if there's any questions or things you think i should include that aren't included in here or things maybe that should be removed that aren't necessary i'm i'm all ears but this is what i'm presenting tonight and if there's no questions i'll turn it over to ann any questions Thanks, Tom. So I actually do not have my slides here because I was not prepared for this meeting today with the slides, but um, that's something I'll be putting together today. So you will see them tonight. Um, but it'll essentially, I'm going to explain the differences between our planning division and zoning division. So I kind of try to explain it in that we have land use control and we have planning and there are two separate divisions and combined we are kind of known as like the zoning office um and then i'd like to maybe talk a little more about planning in general because i feel like my presentation last year i really went into the zoning side of things um maybe get a little bit into the comprehensive land use plan um and talk about that i wonder if there's anything else i should go over i did not include a lot of statistics this time I know in the past I have, but um, they've been pretty steady, so there really wasn't a whole lot to look at with that. And that's all I have. Any suggestions or questions? Okay, thanks. Um, you guys will do great, I'm sure. <laughs> be proud of you, proud to be part of your 
your team. Um, I guess that's all for staff reports. So the only other item we have on the agenda is the the uh, discussion about budget considerations. And Dan is going to lead us through that, which I know he's looking forward to. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think most of our supervisors have been through this uh, once or twice now. Um, so this is an activity that Chris and I, Kelly, had talked about uh, kind of running each of the committees through to just discuss some things about the budget, get a feel for where everybody is as we move forward in presenting a budget. And uh, well, and then as the executive committee has to to kind of finalize that budget before we send it off to the uh, to the full board. Um, I want to just let you know that these numbers out here are very much estimates. Uh, departments are currently in the process of building their budgets. They have not even been submitted to to administration to to know where those numbers are. But as we look at things historically, we have a pretty good idea where we're gonna where we're going to end up and we feel we can start having these conversations ahead of time. Dan, can I interrupt for one second? Sure. Has the highway number, has that been, is that, is that a ballpark as well or? So the highway projects, there's a, there's a 10 year plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a pretty, it's, it's that's not a pretty really solid a ballpark. Number. <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to confirm that. Right. I Thank mean, you. they're all ballpark numbers because they're based on, you know, projected costs and materials and but know, I didn't think uh, that highway was so I wanted to confirm that right yep yep that's so, yes so that is something the highway plan about. is based on as I understand it is based on uh, a projection of what it would cost to uh, bring our highway our basically our new pro our projects budget to the point where all of our roads are on a 20-year replacement cycle that that is correct. So uh, Dustin and the uh, highway crew and along with the state, you know, kind of right. look at all the roads, look at the wear and tear, the age, the amount of traffic that goes on them, prioritize different projects. And they have a 10 year plan of what needs to be done over the next 10 years. Um, but this is all this is all based on getting us on a 20 year replacement cycle for roads. Um, in the past, we had been in the 40, 40 plus um, life cycle and 20s, the recommended age. So um, so that being said, and that's something we always like to point out that, you know, departments in the county are asked to provide you with what their recommendation is. And this is Dustin's recommendation. You get the wonderful job of deciding. <laughs> so that, that's what you that's what you ran for. Um, so uh, just to, to start off, so like I said, these are kind of budget estimations. 2024 is, you know, round numbers, but it's pretty much what it was in 2024. These numbers reflect outside of the uh, borrowing, the general fund and ARPA that exist in 2024, which was kind of the way to, to solve the problem last year. These numbers reflect the levy sales tax, state aids that that the county receives. So you may know that we have a 90 plus million dollar budget. And if you look at the top lines here, they don't add up to 90. They, this is this is the amount of money really that the county has control. So it's not counting fees that are received. It's not counting grants that are received. Some of those things that the that different county departments use in order to run. Um, but how much we get in those is not necessarily in our control. So these are the levy funded operations is really what where we would uh, refer to them. Um, so um, on the left side, you have 2024's funding, then you moving left to right, you have 2024's expenses. 
Um, so you can see the highway projects were about 4.8 million last year, this year. Uh, uh, we live in this budget cycle last year's and this year's get confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have operations. So you'll see operations broken up into salary and fringe and supplies. Um, that is a one third, two third. Uh, if you're kind of looking at how much is 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 what. So if you look at the total operations, two thirds of the operations are salary and fringe, one third are materials, supplies, whatever that might be. And then on the bottom there, you have debt service and you'll see the debt levy and the debt service match. Um, and that is that um, special portion of the levy that is not limited. So um, that's why those two kind of align that in that regard. So as we look forward to 2025, our funding, uh, these are estimations. As we look at where we are in sales tax from the state, sales tax in the county, both of those are trending upward. We get monthly reports on kind of where those are and can make some estimates on where our state aids and our county sales tax are going to be. The levy is limited based on that new construction. So we use a kind of a historical number of about 1.2%, which is about where we live in, in net new construction. Um, there may be some changes to that. That's one that we really don't know until the state does finishes all of the all of their information that they get back from the assessors and uh, kind of punches the numbers and gets us at net new construction number. Like I said, then on the on the right side, you'll see the expenses projected expenses. So projecting that operations uh, for salary and fringe and supplies would stay the same. We have an increase that salary and benefit change that one million dollars that is if you were to provide raises. Um, so we're just kind of showing that that's how much it would cost to do that. And then that top section up there is uh, is the highway projects. Once again, based on that 10 year plan on a 20 year replacement. Um, and then I did provide you with a second page just as this had come up in the past. And like I said, we talked about operations and this being all about levy funded. So this is the list of departments that in some way, shape or form have received levy. So there is uh, so like you won't see the transit commission on that list. Transit Commission receives no levy funding. They're not on the list. Um, so with this activity, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you a, kind of a few questions. You have some post-it notes, and we're going to have you kind of put down your feelings on those, but we'll, we'll get to that question when you want or when, when we're ready for it. First thing we're going to do, though, is just kind of start out asking you um, what are the, and we're going to, I'm going to change the word for the third time here. <laughs> so, um, so what are some of the impacts that you feel should be taken into account when reducing or eliminating funding for highway projects? And I want to kind of qualify what a highway project is. If you look in the department list, you'll see highway maintenance. So a highway project, the simplest definition there is if they're going to take any sort of pavement off of the road and put new pavement down, that would be a project. So chip sealing, pot hole filling, things like that, those fall in the maintenance category. So there's different levels that you can do that, but but that's kind of that separation that, that we talk about there. So when we really talk about projects, you're talking about what most people would consider a new road. Um, so, um, so what, I got a I got a board over here. So so what would you say are some of the impacts if you were to not fund Dustin's recommended uh, twenty year replacement schedule? You're gonna lose a big wad of state aid. Right. She says technically. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Increase future cost. Oh, well, never mind. 
No, no. I... I Maintaining our, our fleet of trucks and equipment is it over and it would cost more for to keep them running than it would be to trade on a more positive cycle. Yep. For the, for the record, I'm gonna get it the microphone. Um, but that that comment was about uh, not maintaining your trucks is going to lead to them deteriorating and. Uh, I don't know for this discussion, we all turn our microphones on so that. Yes. Not to keep remembering to do it. Well, and I'll piggyback on Gary. I mean, if we don't if we don't fix the roads, our trucks are going to fall apart quite a lot faster. Both the county trucks and our personal ones. Our right? personal yeah. trucks. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. I'm not saying I agree with this reasoning, but um, if we uh, fund it less, then that keeps the levy down and people think that we're being responsible for our tax with our taxpayer dollars. Again, not saying I agree, but there is that perception. I think if we cut, it will force us to prioritize in our planning um, some roads over other roads or sections of roads over other roads. So uh, cuts would force uh, priorities. It, I think. Right. So can I just clarify, Dan? Mm -hmm. When we did this last week in exec, I thought the question was not cutting the how fund. It was like not funding it at all. So I just, oh, I'm sorry. It, well, I don't yeah. know. Let's get no. some clarification on that. No, it. It would have been. I don't know that there was an option, I guess. I mean, that is an option, like cutting 100%, but I think there's there's a scale there of how much. Um, not doing it 100% is certainly an option and has its own impacts. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's, well, really that's what we talked about. What percent of the budget request <clears throat> are we, do we think is acceptable? All? Yeah. Less? None? Right. And yes, Diane, this has been an evolving discussion. I know. <laughs> well, I know, and you heard me complaining about scale points last week, so just don't listen to me. Right. We got a new attempt at that. <laughs> yeah, so something could be uh, a suggestion, I'm not saying this is it, but you could say, well, rather than 20 years right away, shoot for something for 30 years replacement. Um, Okay, so that you just I, this isn't something from there, but you I was just following up something in between none and all. Mm -hmm. right. That's kind of what I meant by prioritization. You yeah, have to start sure. say, yeah, you know, we're gonna, yep. Okay, and, and a question on the fleet maintenance um, does that come from the uh, different fund? So, fleet maintenance is complex. Um, pretty much all work that is done by the highway shop uh, is. Think of it as being charged back to different to different areas. So some of the work that the county highway department does is for the county, um, and so that might be county maintenance. So if they do work on county maintenance and use ten trucks, the county maintenance will pay how pay a portion of their utilization of that of that county truck. Same thing if they did some work for a township, the township pays for a portion of that fleet. If they do work for the state, the state pays for a portion of that of that fleet. So not doing can not doing projects is a portion of that. So if you don't do projects, those trucks won't get utilized and those trucks will not well, essentially county projects won't pay for a portion of those trucks. That's a good explanation. Thank you. Right. Good. I thought I was confusing. <laughs> um 
another consideration is that the county roads is one of the most visible things that we do that people interact with all the time. And so if they look bad or if they look good, right, that really affects uh, public perception. And if I may, I will piggyback on on Supervisor Barrier that um, the condition of the roads, I suspect, has a pretty strong impact on economic development. If I were looking to locate a fairly major business here and the roads are horrible, I would likely go someplace else. And I think economic development is a really significant issue for us on this board and in the county. And I would say that um, of all the operational departments, everybody uses the road. I mean, you look down here and some of these here have like very few people that uh, stay like the like, like the neighbors. You know, I, I know you can count the families, but the people actually live in there compared to the people that are actually using the roads, that should have somewhat of an impact too. I would point out that the neighbors isn't on the list. Big <laughs> but yes, I get your point. Yep. Why aren't they on the list? They don't receive any levy funding. They're paid for by the people Fees. that live in the neighbors. But don't they also uh hasn't the, the county written off some of their debt? So the county pays off the debt that was used to pay for the buildings. Yes. And that's not a benefit. That's a big benefit for the neighbors. That okay. that is a, a benefit to the neighbors. Right. Yes. So the how does maintain? How long ownership. will that be going on then? Not exactly sure when that. I believe. Oh, don't quote me on it. But I want to say that the neighbors that is ending in the next couple of years. We we the, we we did refinance that. No, one. I we think it's that. about eight years. Yep. Just um, but so we use by everyone. Any other? Well, impact? one uh, I, I can't think of it's it's what it's the um, rationale we've used. For most time I've been on the board, which is that highway highway funding, unlike or project funding, unlike some other kinds of uh, funding, um, has flexibility. I mean, if you don't do it this year, you don't have to shut the whole program down. <laughs> um, so it's it's a flexible source of funding to balance a budget. But if we're talking about you know, the highway, they also have a fund balance, which they use to kind of smooth out the ups and downs of their uh, right. you know, budget. And then that is also used like for new equipment in that too. Yep. You know? And the way it sounds, they're, they're putting quite a bit of money in the fund balance lately. Yes, we're getting back Making on, progress. <laughs> making progress, yes. something to write on that. Um, all right, uh, if there's no other impacts, I have a question from the back. You have to ask him for. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose we're going to have Mr. <laughs> Sure. Safety. Wait a second. Wait a second. I think safety should be included in this. It has a, a direct impact on all residents. And uh, you know, if the if we don't have roads in good condition, we're more likely to have accidents. Uh, when you consider of the items you have there. Safety should be a top concern. Thank you. 
right. We good for the highway? <laughs> All right. So the next step is uh, you have uh, post-it notes in front of you. Uh, if you can, on that post-it note, write highway on the top. And we're going to ask you to rate on a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being doing no highway projects, 5 being somewhere similar to last year, and 10 being fully fund the uh, request from the highway commissioner. Do we do better that time? Better scaling. Thank right. you so much. <laughs> so then the next consideration is uh, to take an account um, and we'll kind of go through that same you know what is the impact uh, question about salary and benefits changes so this this graph right here suggests a, a one million dollar cost for salary and fringe increases so if you're familiar we have a grid within the county um, and we apply salary increases in two ways. One of them is a grid increase. The grid increase impacts all employees. That is, if step one is a $20 an hour, the grid increase would change that to, let's just say $22, right? Um, and that would happen in every one of the different squares of the grid. So that would be that cost of living raise. And what that one also does is it changes our starting wage. So that kind of helps us with the uh, competitiveness as we as we're hiring people. The other raise that we have is a step raise, which is more of a merit raise. And so that's somebody moving forward in that based on their experience. So as they go forward, big thing about the steps is there's 11 steps. If you are at step 11, you don't get a step raise anymore. So that's why we say the cost of living raise impacts everyone. The steps does not necessarily impact everyone. Um, so this recommendation that million dollars is based on a 2% cost of living raise. So that grid adjustment and uh, and then providing steps. And once again, this is just the levy impacted positions. So the total cost as you see, uh, as you see recommendations of the budget going forward is going to be more than a million dollars, but not all of those salaries are paid for by the levy they may be paid for by fees or grants or something else. And it's very complex to figure that out because some grants actually have a ceiling. So when you do give somebody a raise, it does impact the levy. So uh, kind of uh, very round number of a million. So uh, what would you say are the impacts of not providing or providing a lesser raise to employees. Oh, um, so thinking about a specific department, emergency services, right? They're having a pretty hard time uh, hiring and retaining employees um, and failing to give them a raise is going to make that situation even worse, uh, which has a very serious safety implication. I suppose the jail staff, right, problems there, that's another safety issue. With nobody can read my handwriting. I, I hope sometimes I can. But <laughs> I went with retention resulting in safety issues there. I just feel very strongly that our staff at the county is a real treasure. We couldn't do anything um, without our staff, and our staff has done, you know, over the last, well, the years that I've been on the board has done over and above expectations without appropriate um, adjusted for inflation kinds of salary increases. We can't do our work 
at the county unless we sufficiently reward our staff. So, uh, and, you know, in an inflationary environment, understanding that it's coming down, but a 2% raise doesn't necessarily even come close to keeping up. Can I piggyback on that? And I don't look at it, I don't look on it as a reward. I look on it as a pay for services. Yeah. They do the work, so they're getting paid. Uh, so I, I agree with, with what Diane said. That's retention again, too, okay. but, and morale. Serving our clients. I'm in your support of a small like raise, but I think we're doing like very good right now. I'm just looking across the table. And one guy came from Pepin, one came from Washington County, you know, like from job. So are we drawing, we're drawing people in. And I know there's quite a few that come in from Eau Claire that we've got that work there. So I, I think we're being pretty competitive on that. But I, I do think you got to have a little raise for incentive too. Right there. I don't want to paraphrase, but it would saying remaining competitive. Be? And my other comment would be that even though the, these raises seem like a lot of money, when you take all the vacancies that aren't being filled, it actually isn't as much as what we think it is. That's correct. I've been told that <laughs> be, you're by your boss. Yep. It says vacancies decrease costs. <laughs> All right, any other comment? Well, Tom had brought up yesterday a really good point um, about the potential for layoffs, right? Increased labor costs uh, with the budget pressures might result in more layoffs, um, which is negative. Say more. Um, so if, if we give uh, people raises, the people who are working, um, and we realize that uh, suddenly labor is costing too much, uh, there might be a desire to compensate by laying people off, right? So people are better paid, but there's going to be fewer of them, or there might be. Okay. I thought it was a good point. Well, I think it, it's <laughs> Maybe he explained it kind of torturing. Unless you think there's an unlimited amount of money. Sure isn't, so. Yeah, thanks, Monica. All right, good. One more. I think, like, you know, one of the uh, benefits working for the county is it's a uh, civil service job. And the old saying when I got out of college was, like, once you get one of those jobs, if you don't screw up, you got a job for life. You don't have to about, you know, worry about being laid off. So that would also be a benefit that's probably not tangible, but it's still a benefit. Like there. I would just point out that's less of a benefit given the change <laughs> in the labor laws. Yeah. So, but it, it is so. But when I came out of college, there there was no jobs available. You look yeah, at the no, paper, there was nothing. And they said, you know, even a, like a mailman's job was a lot of people right. just you got benefits. You, know, and you got yeah. Right, I agree. It's less, it, but you know, it, it could be less than what it was, was, but. Yep. All right. And I'm just I'm just going to add that that um, uh, the benefits we provide to staff in our public service environment have been I mean staff are spending more um, out of their pockets for health care and other benefits and I you know um, we we need at least um, to keep pace with salary um, it, it, it doesn't compensate but but we need to we need to make an effort. Stick with the remain competitive. Okay, I'm, I'm okay no. with that. Okay. All right. All right, moving on. So now we will ask the question. So if you just want to write salary on the uh, on the top of your post-it note. So here's the scale for this one. So once again, zero to 10. So with 
zero being wages should be frozen. Nobody gets a raise in any way, shape or form. And 10 being the full 2% plus steps that is being kind of represented in this in this document. Then. We will move on to operations. Um, so this is a, a kind of that same kind of question again. So what impact should be taken into account when reducing or eliminating funding for operations? Um, so operations are the levy funded operations of the county. Um, and once again, like I said, about two thirds of the, those costs are salary and fringe. Um, and one third are supplies. And I can let you know, I don't have the numbers here and it's not a zero change, but it is pretty close to a zero change in the supply cost over about the last four years. Mm -hmm. So the operations cost may have gone up, but all of those costs were through raises essentially in the past. We haven't, we haven't seen really any supply cost increase over the last, and that's been because as we built our budgets, we were told not to. <laughs> so that's what you're that's what you're seeing. All right. So what would be the impacts of decreasing operations costs? So one consequence is that it makes it harder for people to do their jobs, um, mm -hmm. which would increase labor costs, right? Because if you're spending more time doing all these workarounds to deal with your supplies, right? <laughs> labor costs, so there's a trade off. And uh, the county is really providing services. That's what we do. So this might affect the services that we can provide. In a negative way. Yeah. And I just sort of picking up on uh, Monica's point. I mean, our staff has done a really fabulous job of doing m more with less consistently over the last as long, pretty much as long as I've been on this board. Um, and you know, at, at, at some point, that that can't that can't continue. I mean, because it, 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 it you're, you're both right; it affects services to our constituents. Is that retention then? Kind of? <laughs> no, and it's, no, no, it's no. This is like constituent service. Okay. Um, so. It it negatively it could negatively affect constituent service. Okay. And if it makes you crabby, then I guess it's retention. <laughs> <laughs> I think it it might have the effect of sort of discouraging, you know, innovation. Mm -hmm. You know, if people feel like, well, gee, I, why why suggest a new idea if there's not going to be any resources to to consider it? Getting smaller, Dan. <laughs> never know how many you're gonna it's mainly for me and chris <laughs> apparently <laughs> what does that say i don't That's know <laughs> it's an eye chart right. it is kind of the facilitator's right. nightmare though because you want to get it down really fast right and <laughs> right and you don't want, I would say, is that right? Especially in cursive when you can't spell it you just kind of wiggle know, right, exactly <laughs> Any other comments as it relates to decreasing operations expenses? All right, we will move along to the voting. Or the voting, it's not voting. 
polling. Uh, so, um, so once again, same scale of zero to 10. And in this particular case, zero is going to be a large cut to operations with large being defined as $1 million or greater. And 10 being maintaining operations at the current level. Say again, please. So zero is a large cut to operations being $1 million or greater. And 10 being maintaining operations at the level that they have been the last couple of years. And don't forget that the salary and fringe is already another question. So the, the operations do go up if you increase salary and fringe, but. Could you just explain exactly what you mean by operations? Does that mean like if you need a new roof, is that part of operations? No. Or uh, no, a new roof. Operations but... really equipment like your computers and that stuff? No, it's like paper. Well, that'd be operation supplies would be paper. Uh, okay. Our computer systems would be operation supplies. Always. But in general, operations are everything that we do. Um, yeah, we, need, so, we need to do the job. Yeah, so that's, well, the, yes, it's the people and the, and the materials needed to do the job okay. by the departments that are in this list. Okay. And that's where, like I say, we can take the example of you can cut transit, but you're not going to solve any problems because they don't use any of the levy money. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it doesn't fix it. That's why it's important to kind of keep in mind these departments, because if you are going to save money, it has to be from one of these areas or in the or, case or all or whatever. Or in the case of human services, there are a number of programs that we could certainly cut except that we would continue to owe the state money yep. in it, perpetuity, basically, yep. for services that we are no longer providing because it's mandated, because it's mandated. Yeah, I, I don't know, I never know how to exactly mm -hmm. characterize that, but there are a number of programs for which Dunn County is obligated by statute to um, provide. And if we if we decided to cut them, we would still owe the state the same amount of money. Yep. The, the complexity of decreasing operations is uh, something we're, <laughs> we're trying to avoid in this because it is. And it's it, crazy. Yep. Because there are grants that are match funds, right? So if you cut that matching funds, you're actually say it's a two million dollar grant with a one million dollar match. You cut that million dollars, you lose three. Three. So, um, but that's not true of all grants. It all depends. So, uh, so can I thought I understood operations, but can you give me examples of what would be in operations other than supplies? The salary and fringe of the people. It, that's um, two thirds is salary. But I thought we just voted on salary and fringe and we've separated it out. So, over, so, over and above. So I guess in short, cutting this is either decreasing the supplies or laying off people. That, yes, because the salary and fringe question is a is an independent question. And can you before you before you quit? Can you uh, when you're after you're done? But can before you step down? Can you talk a little bit about why you're doing this exercise and what you hope to, how you hope to use it? Sure. Um, that was the the last of the okay. <laughs> of the questions, so right. I will go right into that. So, yeah. Well, I I think really you know part of the uh, intent around this exercise is to have you talk amongst yourselves about uh, what are those impacts so that your thoughts about how it's going to how these things would impact are heard by your fellow supervisors and um, and then they're also heard by me and Chris so that uh, we can take that into account as we go in there and if we know that 
everybody said they want to fully fund the, the highway's $7 million ask, it wouldn't be very smart of us to propose a budget that cuts it. Um, so how do we kind of get a feel for where the board is standing right now on these particular questions so that as we move forward with the budget creation, we have an idea of, of where everything stands so that we can create a budget that has the ability to get passed without a uh, marathon meeting in November. <laughs> so, um, okay. Are you going to run these data back by us or not or maybe you haven't talked about it so there's the data does kind of get a little weird tom gets to vote three times well that's vote. true tom gets both yeah, three times true. <laughs> all different <laughs> so uh, um so it's uh, i think a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. it's it's a feel um you know where are we what where where do people kind of fall and and just to kind of get a feel for for where we are um and uh i guess that to try and make sure that we're we're proposing to the executive committee a budget that we feel has a good chance of of being approved by the by the full board and and is in alignment with the goals may i add a comment i wasn't sure where to add this but i was wondering about the policies that we make in this committee with respect to zoning um, and how they can cost either more or less to implement. Um, like, so for example, last year, um, or maybe it was two years ago, we had all of these variance requests coming in for the contiguous buildable oh. area problem, right? Um, and we eliminated that requirement and that saved a lot of sa staff time. Um, and so I'm wondering, like just in general, if our zoning code our zoning ordinance is simpler if that could save money um, making it easier to administer i'm seeing a little bit of a yes so i don't know if that's something we should be considering when we're making changes um interesting well, okay so would that be an operations yep question maybe you could think about a way to phrase that so that it fit on that sure. sheet sure um um but it is something to consider and i don't think we ever i we we, we rarely if ever talk about that how it might save staff time or make your work slightly easier i mean so good point yeah. and it's something to consider for all of the committees um whether yeah, yeah. simplifying the policies might save labor yeah yep and, and then we could give them more work somewhere else. <laughs> Which we undoubtedly would. Yes, that's, yeah. As long as you've got time. Simply put, policies could cost money or save, uh, so. Uh-uh, I'd say no, Mr. Chairman. Say no. Yeah. Okay. Um, I say yes. For the board. You. Yeah, it's just comment step. No, wait. All right, I'll wait. <sighs> Thank you. Um, sure thing. I mean, the the, the policy editorial comment. Yeah, yeah. The, the policies are there to provide appropriate development. And that it's if you've ever been in an unzoned area, you can see what happens. And so you want to make sure that the uh, development is so I think, appropriate. I think we're going to be talking about policy right well, now. I'm just, budget. I know, but that's a good discussion, but not for right now. So you group last thought and then. No, that's it. I mean, it, it, it was just that it, if you simplify things, you eliminate some of your controls. Thanks. Ever. All right, that, yeah. that, that, was good. Yep. that is all I have. So unless you have any other questions, I can. Now, did you say this might be a chance for the five of us to have a discussion on some of those ideas? Or are we done with this discussion? Uh, from an agenda standpoint, you are able to have 
conversations based on budget consideration. It does say conversation, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yes. Oh, I, I think I, this I, is an open discussion. So if you have thought thoughts, Mike. I think this is a great time to do it because we, we can't really do it so much in, in the board meeting. Uh, and I'd kind of like to get a feel for uh, what people think. Uh, if we fund this fully, for example, the only way we're going to do it is uh, borrowing and uh, fund balance. Is that correct? Yeah. So, how do we feel? I, I, I don't think we could borrow that much with the current um, uh, well, the way the board is at this particular time. But how would we do it? Is it even possible to do this entire thing here? You think? I mean, what's missing on here is uh, the additional revenues that you anticipate being available, right? So the only revenues that we anticipate being available that are not reflected here are there's a TID closure in the city of Menominee that will have an impact on our ability to raise our levy. Um, it it impacts the uh, the levy limit the thing. It's probably a smaller amount. Um, and the Elk Creek Solar Project would be the other one, but my understanding is they're not at a point where they're going to start creating energy in this they're year. They're not going to stop start building until 2025. Yeah. So, and that funding it doesn't become available until they start putting right. energy into the grid. So, now I would say it it so. it reflects what we expect. So the three million dollars in state aid reflects the increase we expect in state aid. Yep. Okay. So yeah, the total increase, if you do the simple math, is a million dollars. Where the in the past the tendency to the look to look for the the flexible sources of money and how we how we develop how we projects have always been the one that is <clears throat> one of the ones that is easiest. Um, you know we've eliminated departments that save some money, but not much. Um, Home health care. And the other thing you can do is you can say, well, we need a, a percentage cut across the board. And that is a sledgehammer way of doing it too. It's you really know, poor public there. policy. Yeah. yeah. So but I've also been told that it's poor public policy to borrow every year too. And that was from our county manager. He said, like, you should do it occasionally, but not make it every year because that's just a way of getting around the uh, levy limits. And I, I don't recall hearing that. I don't either. Uh, well, you mean our, our previous administrator? No, I'm Chris. Yeah. yeah I, well, at, at one of those budget meetings, maybe you said I missed it, it but it's uh, not good policy to, to borrow every year. And we have a we have a capital improvements plan that, uh, enacted by this board, you included that mm -hmm. um, stipulates borrowing annually. But we're pay paying off more than what we're asking. And we are paying off right. more than we're borrowing, absolutely, yeah. without so question. we're putting limits on our borrowing. Right. We're not, not, not doing We're borrowing. not eliminating borrowing. But if you just look at, at the, uh, the amount that you've got to pay back for the uh, principal in that, once it's all paid for, I mean, there's a lot more money available to the county that you're not paying for debt service. So the, can I 
you mean? Yeah, sure. So that debt service, that debt levy goes away. It doesn't stay available for you because that's in, that's in addition to our limited levy. So if we weren't paying that $5 million in debt service, we would not be able to levy that $5 million. So they, they, they live, they align with each other. Does not, yeah, become available. That's a good point. Yeah. And that's the, the kind of questions and discussions that help clarify things. I'm sorry, go ahead, Monica. Um, I, I think I remember what the county manager was saying about that. My re recollection of the message was that um, the point was that we should be aware if it becomes a habit, um, not necessarily a recommendation that it's bad or good, but just be conscious of what we're doing. Um, but I had a question about the debt service. So I take it that right now we're that's like kind of paying the minimum, right? That we're not paying more than is required. So there's not like flexibility to move that downward. Yeah. So uh, bonds that we pay are a little bit different than like if you were to borrow money or, or a mortgage where you can't necessarily pay them off earlier. The, the amount that we are intended to pay off is, is essentially somewhat predetermined in some cases. They call them callable or uncallable um, bonds. So it isn't necessarily true that you could pay off more and decrease it in the future. It, it could be, it couldn't be, it all depends on the on the bond and how it was put together. But that's where it's a little bit dissimilar to, to like your mortgage. If you double your mortgage payment, you'll pay off your mortgage in 15 years as opposed to 30. Um, but that's not necessarily true with bonds. In some cases it is, in some cases it's not. And it, it's, it, is, it is correct that we have substantially renegotiated our debt over the past- We can renegotiate. Several years, thus saving money and debt service yep. our our plan to slowly reduce debt is not based on uh, paying off more debt faster it's based on taking on less debt going forward right? correct although we have you know as opportunities uh, uh, arise done some renegotiation right. sure. of long-term debt so on the chart here the 2025 funding doesn't include 3,000 that we've going to, that we have planned on borrowing each year. The three, three million. million. Three, yeah, three million. <laughs> yeah. You can tell yeah. where I live. Yeah. It, it, it does not because it is something that needs to be voted on each year. Okay. So if we, if we did have that three million, we're still four million approximately that we're looking for. That would be correct. So what is the uh, you know difference? Because I thought that we were going to get you know three million up to we can borrow up to three million, but here, unless I'm reading this wrong, the debt debt levy is is five million. So there's how much you borrow. So the debt service yeah. is paying off your debt. So that's how much that's how much we're paying every year for it. So just because we borrow three million, yeah. that it, it's income? it's what income. Well, here, like you got the levy as income, you got the county sales tax as income, and the state aid is income, and, we, and you got the debt levy. There is a debt levy that matches the amount of the debt service that we pay. Debt service is your annual payment. Annual on payment, your, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. the, the debt levy is how we get the money to pay that. Right. Borrowing would show up in addition to that, so that'd be kind of that one year funding. The capital improvements borrowing is not here. Okay. It's a separate thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The debt service is principal and interest. Correct. Yeah. So, yep.
I might be sounding stupider all the time, but do we borrow twice, like once for capital improvement and once to help balance the uh, the budget? We don't borrow for operations. No, we we borrow. We have borrowed for capital improvements or highway projects in the past, and that yep. is that is the only. We don't thing. borrow for operations, Never. Gary. You cannot no, borrow for operations. No, that was a, a good question because that it just makes me think about it here now. You can't borrow for operations. I understand that. But if we borrowed three million, it goes to the highway projects. Is that's not operations? That's that's where it would go. Um it, it when you say operation, so you can't borrow for like salaries and, and things like that just because people wouldn't uh person that is buying the bonds no wouldn't wouldn't buy them so you say we're going to buy a truck we're going to fix a road we're going to do something like that is is how we would sell the bonds so just to follow up on gary's you can be impatient with me but i, I don't get it so we're, we're, we are borrowing for capital improvements we, we well, well we have suggested that we didn't last year, but yes. So we haven't spent the three million from last year. It was the guess in, the year in before. Tw in twenty twenty three, we did not borrow. Right. We, we used ARPA funds essentially right. to cover those capital improvements and highway projects. But twenty twenty four, we just okayed year. borrowing. Right. Uh, and right. will it be borrowed this year? Yeah, you're going to have that discussion later tonight. This will be uh, we approve so, it. Yep. The bond sale. Uh, yeah. Yep. So there'll be a parameters resolution that'll go to the board tonight, which is where you'll define the amount of money and and what you would consider to be an acceptable interest rate. Those are the parameters that you'll be voting on tonight. Okay. So that was a kind of a separate thing, but uh, looking at 2025, we would we could borrow for capital improvements. But yeah. would we borrow on top of that to, to balance the budget here? So it, we've we've typically combined the borrowing for capital improvements and highway projects. Uh, if you remember a couple of years ago, even highway projects were included in the CIP. They've now kind of been uh -huh. pulled out a little bit, but but those discussions happen at the same time. So like Dustin gave a presentation on his projects as part of the capital improvement plan, even though they're not necessarily included in the capital improvement plan. Okay. Keep going, Mike. Are you yeah, I, right I'm here? just trying I'm just trying to figure out, you know, are we gonna borrow five million uh because we want to cover the capital improvement plan and some highway projects? Uh, it's a possibility. So the capital improvement plan you I believe discussed at exact last week and the Funding for that does not include borrowing. It is going to be right. using remaining ARPA funds, and we move some projects into 2024 in order to eliminate the expenses for capital improvements in 2025. That's why you also don't see them listed in the uh, expense column in 2025. Where does use of the general fund fit into this? That would be another option to increase the funding. Right. Um, and in 2024, we must have used uh, ARPA in place of a general fund. You used, we, we used both. One point four general fund. On that. One point four million in 2024. Well, oh, there it is. Yeah. Yep. So that's not on this current one. That's what I was. That's what I was, I was getting at. Those are decisions that the board yeah, makes. I, <laughs> so. I was trying to sort of articulate what are the op, what are the decisions we options we have, mm -hmm. other than absolute despair and um, <laughs> going to gravel roads. So the, we plan on doing more of these uh, discussions and committees, and so yeah, that yeah. was really where this focus was around expenses. But yeah, the next one is going to have to be around revenues but I, I welcome the discussion at any time this is it, it's hard to have with 29 people 
No, it's good. This is, I'm glad Mike brought this up because it's a good time to do it. So um, I remember there was discussion a few months ago about uh, some property that the county owns, right, and that we discussed in this committee um, as uh, assets that could be sold, right? And I'm, uh, um, we, I think that we had a good discussion. It was correct. I'm wondering, are there other assets that are like that that people have been talking about um, that we might sell? I'm just wondering. So the old transfer station. Uh, has been in discussion in the facilities committee. Um, the agenda is not set until like later today, but I believe it's going to be on the agenda for for next Wednesday to discuss the potential sale of of that, which would theoretically turn into a, well a revenue, or depending on when it happens, it would go into the fund balance. Probably not enough to solve these problems. Okay. <laughs> so, but there have been discussions on selling all or part of the rec park. Oh. Talked to who's had that? Discussion? Well, uh, when Bob was still here, he did a little report, and it talked about uh, what it would cost to build a new one, and you know what you could sell it for, and, and so forth. So while there haven't been discussions that said, let's sell it, uh, I have heard uh, constituents say, well, why don't we just sell part of it to the hockey and let them deal with it or so forth. So there are actual things that we might not want to sell like the islands, but they're there. Anything else? Any other questions? Well, we got Dan here. I know we're on the topic. We always have me or Chris to to ask these questions of like part of this is to get the brain yeah. rolling. Right. Because I think that, that this here is a good idea. By just, you know, some of the questions that was asked, there's a lot of uh, like not uncertainty, but not really full knowledge of all this here what's going on. So I think it's really good to have this here. If nothing else, just refresh our memory. Mm -hmm. and, and can I make a, a statement too? I want to make it real clear that they're not considering selling the rec park. I just <laughs> said it is a piece of property that they own and the value was determined a while back when considering moving it. So yeah, probably way before the spike in property prices because mm -hmm. that was whenever that was. 2017 or Mr. Colson was still here. Yeah. Point well taken, Mike. We don't want the, that impression to be. Uh, anything else? Any other questions? Okay. I guess we're. I guess you're off the hook. Thanks. I think it's it's getting better every time, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I don't envy you ha having to sort of consolidate this. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Eagle. That's it for the agenda. So there are there any announcements? Okay, then our next meeting is uh, July 3rd. Um, so tonight we'll, uh, the proposal we brought before the board and we'll see what the reaction is. I think we all have some ideas about what some of the sticking points are gonna be. And uh, we'll see what happens. Been a long haul, but it may be longer, <laughs> probably will be. So with that, we're adjourned.